fell off somewhere out on the highway. Man, I just don't believe it. Welcome back to Freeman's Garage. It's another day in the garage, but we're gonna hop on this hog and go out of the garage. We're gonna take our classic 1985 Harley Davidson Sportster 1000 Ironhead out on the longest ride that I've ever taken it on. In a second here, I'll tell you how far we're gonna go and we'll fire this hog up and hit the road. But if you're not familiar with this bike, it's worth taking less than 60 seconds to give you the scoop. This is the one owner Harley Davidson that we bought from an estate and we got it running for the first time in an, an unknown period of time. We didn't know how long it's been since it's ran. That was the first video with this bike here at Freeman's Garage. The second video with this bike was when we took it out on our first ride. Everything went great. The bike was awesome, but we didn't go very far. Today's ride is gonna be simple as well, but we're gonna go a little bit further. We'll go, oh, about 100-ish miles or so, and we're gonna check the fuel mileage. And remember, this bike doesn't have a fuel gauge, and so I'm, well, with the factory tiny little peanut tank, I'm, well, I'm 98% sure that we're not gonna run out of gas. I guess it's possible if if the bike were running rich. There's no service station of any kind on the route we're taking. And speaking of the route, all these orange highways you see here, we're gonna be kinda sneaking in between some of them because the roads we're gonna be on aren't even on here. Truck driver map, not really, not really a lot of motorcycle routes on it, if you know what I mean. This is an old Harley, so it does leak oil, so let's check the oil. I'm sure we're good. I checked it last time I put fuel in. Okay, we're good to go. Let's check the tire pressure, gear up, and get the heck out of here. All right, the rear tire is good. Let's make sure the front tire is good. I'm running 36 in the back and 32 in the front. All right, let's fire this bike up. We'll go to the service station. We're gonna top off the tank and then we'll hit the road. We'll stop somewhere in the middle of this 100-ish mile sweet run on this sweet hog and uh, we'll take a peek inside the gas tank and decide if we're gonna be able to make it back or not. I'm sure we will. Uh, but there's always that chance. But before we fire the bike up and warm it up for a second and then head out of here, we got a little bit of a challenge. 100 degrees outside and climbing. Do we be Mr. Safety and wrap ourselves up in our leathers and go the safe route or the safer route? Or do we just keep the speeds down a bit, you know, just tone it down a little bit, don't get all buck wild and dress a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more for the weather. Thing is though, if you went down in a cotton t-shirt, even at 30 miles an hour, I'm sure you'd be wishing you had leather on. Well, what would Jesse James do? Well, he would ride from Texas to Sturgis, South Dakota, in a flannel with no helmet. I'm not brave enough to do that, but at the same time, I don't want to look like a dork. I, 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 I don't know. Let's just go ride. Give it a tiny bit of choke, a little bit of gas.
saw this corner up here we got to hang this right and so I thought well that's not a highway we're getting on it's asphalt but there's no lines painted on it you know it's not 70 miles an hour so we'll stop and take this jacket off just boiling in here and I knew that wasn't very smart to pull off onto the side like that because these rocks the ground that looks like this around here it's it can be deceiving you put your front tire on it and it just just it just melts away from underneath you so that was really stupid I wouldn't say that I almost uh, dumped this 85 Harley Sportster Ironhead but eh, you know I'd say the uh, the greasiness and the underpants departments probably a four out of ten it also doesn't help with the heat what it does to the ground in fact it looks like my uh, the kickstand yeah, the kickstand on a little chunk of asphalt here and it's melting into the asphalt so better hurry up and get this off and get back on the road and I guess tonight I'll have to clean that gunk off the kickstand.
fast. I looked, looked in the mirror real quick though, if there was any cars coming up behind us, we would have gotten them. Yay. We'll stay up on the surface here. We won't go park in that grass. It'll probably start on fire. Man, that was awesome. Now this table looks like it's from the 1930s. Probably is. That's when a lot of these roadside picnic areas were built in Texas. The bike ran good. Everything's going fine. We should probably take a look in the tank. We're at the uh, turnaround point. I'm not sure how many miles we've gone, but I heard some thunder in the distance and if we need gas, I, I doubt we will. Let's take a look in the tank. Okay, hopefully we got half a tank. At the gas station before we headed, oh, we got lots of fuel. Before we headed out, I, uh, when I filled it up, I filled it up as high as it could possibly go. Well, to right, right there. Oh yeah, we got lots of gas. Thing is, there's a feller here that said about seven to ten miles or so that way, there is a gas station. And if we went over there, if we scooted on down the highway over there, we could top that tank off and then we'd be guaranteed to be good. I'd add some miles on too, onto the run here, but I think what we should do, I think we're good. I don't think we're really going to be chancing it. So I think we should, we'll go back the way that we came and then top the tank off at the gas station we started from and then we can get real accurate fuel mileage. And plus we'll have done 100 miles-ish, I think. And uh, I, know, I think doing it that way even though it does add that little bit of risk. Um, it does lower the risk of being rained on. Slam the bottle of water while we've been sitting here and we'll take this with us because if we put it in the trash cans here, it's just gonna fall out and, and then it's gonna become an unsightly blemish on nature. Well, let's get our motors running and head out on the highway. Although if we did go over to that gas station the one that's seven ten miles down the road here we could get some beef jerky even though I'm 90 eh, no not 94 percent 93.5 percent completely almost confident in making it back on fuel which by the way going back the way we came it's the only the only fuel on that route is in a gas can in somebody's barn. I'm about 90, 91.9% uh, positive that we're going to be good. So, I mean, I was pretty confident, but I still got that feeling inside, just that little bit of, eh, you know, we should probably play it safe, but I think we are safe. But... If we do this, and we go through with it, we won't have to wonder anymore. Right? Right. Yep, let's roll. Hey, you know, I like smoke and lightning. You know, heavy metal thunder. You know, 
whatever comes our way. Visors down, everybody. Let's roll. Should probably turn the key on there. Help myself, we're good. I'll stop being a chicken and ride. Oh, wait, I need to call my mom first. boys but we'll wait
getting close to being back. I wonder if we have enough fuel. I can't see it sloshing around in the tank anymore. But there's only one way to find out. Let's keep going. Oh, that was awesome. Man, awesome ride. Let's do the math real quick and, well actually, I gotta show you something. There's a wire hanging off the bike now. Let's look at that real quick. And then, we'll do the math on our fuel mileage. Oh, that was nice. Oh, release. You know, if I was a bad boy, I wouldn't, you know, have to wear this. You know, if I didn't uh, care at all about my skin staying on my body when I fall on the pavement at 70 miles an hour. Man, this bike ran great though. Listen, listen. Hear it? Oh, oh man, those pipes tingling. Boy, does that bring back memories of my childhood. All right, let's look at this wire now. Okay, that one right there. I don't know what that's for. Well, it reaches over here. Wait a second. Did the, did the horn fall off? I don't remember, is this where the horn's mounted? What? I don't know, is the horn on here? Man. Don't tell me something fell off the bike. The horn's gone, isn't it? It fell off somewhere out on the highway. Oh man, this is not cool. This is not cool. One owner, 1985 Harley Davidson Ironhead Sportster 1000. 
in the original factory horn fell off on the highway. Or on one of those little uh, back roads. Can't even tell you how much that hurts. It hurts. We need to retrace our steps and go out there and find it. If it's on the road surface, it's gonna get smushed. But there's only maybe an hour of daylight left, max. So there's no, no point in even doing it right now. Man, I just don't believe it. But I have to believe it because I'm not seeing it. Well, I'm gonna take a second here to figure out our fuel mileage and I'll be right back with you. And, yeah, I don't know, might have lost for words. We'll talk to you in a second. Fifty-four point five miles per gallon. Take that, foreign jobs. Well, let's look on the bright side. We put on almost a hundred miles on this Harley. The furthest we've gone in one ride on this bike so far. Almost hit a deer more than once. Almost hit a snake. Almost wiped out. Well, you should go over and subscribe to the Freeman's Garage Extra channel as well, if you haven't, because over there on that channel, we are going on a rescue mission for this missing horn. We are going behind enemy lines. And on that note, I'm going to send you to another video with this bike to watch next. I appreciate you. I'll see you next time. I got to go. I, I got to I got to go. Uh, I got to go pillow scream over this horn. This means a